In just a moment, we're going to get the opportunity to hear the story of prospective candidate Julie Chamberlain. And the reason I appear is because you know Mike and Julie, but this is probably one of the first times you've seen that PC in front of their name. We are very pleased uh, to add to the numbers of prospective candidates for this coming year. We are up to five now, and we are very pleased about that. And so... um, Joining, we've already announced uh, the prospective candidates of, of uh, Lise Bridges and Chris DeBorowitz, as well as Megan Mingus. And now today we get to formally welcome Mike and Julie Chamberlain, along with Deuce and Katie and Sean. And so we are just excited about what God is doing. And so this morning, I ask that you greet with me prospective candidate Julie Chamberlain. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, I'm from Pensacola, and in Pensacola we had a core sergeant major who had this really booming and resounding voice, and every Sunday when he got on the stage, he would come up and he would say, God is good, and the congregation would reply with, all the time. Exactly. And then he would say, all the time, God is good. Excellent. You guys are good at this. Okay, well, I'm sharing that with you because that is my testimony this morning, that God is indeed good all the time. I grew up in a Christian home, Christian parents. We attended the Corps. Um, I was a junior soldier and then a Corps cadet. I played in the band and went to summer camps and things like that. And um, I never really doubted God's presence in my life. Um, And it it was just never a question for me. But I remember the first time that I heard him speak to me, and that was at the Florida Music Institute my very first year. I was 10 years old, and I was very nervous because I didn't know anybody. And when I went to my band class, I started looking around at all the faces, and I stopped when I saw one boy. And there were two reasons why he was interesting to me. The first was because he didn't have a horn. So when the bandmaster would call everybody to play, he would bring his hands up without a horn. And he would pantomime all of his fingerings. Very interesting. And the other reason was because I thought he was very cute. Well, I just knew from the first time I laid eyes on him that that boy and I were meant to be together. And um, by the time we were 17, we were engaged. And um, it took us a while, but six years later, we were married. And I know that it was a very God calling on my life, even though I was a very dramatic child and you know, fell in love in and out quickly. But um, it was definitely a God thing. He was very good to me by bringing me a good and godly husband. And I can definitely say that I am a much better person because I married Mike Chamberlain. And I still think he's very cute. Well, yeah, and now he has a horn, so. (laughs) I'm not going to embarrass him and tell you the reason why he didn't have a horn. If you want to ask him, you can ask him later. Um, Well, when we first got married, we discussed all of our, you know, plans for the future and things, as all young married people do. And we had a lot of big plans. And um, one of the things that I was absolutely adamant about was that I was not going to have any children. I know, right? Okay, well, three years later, God had other plans for us and blessed us with our first son, Deuce. And um, I've learned a lot from being Deuce's mother, and I've enjoyed it very much. And once I had Deuce, I was absolutely hooked on children. I I couldn't wait. I had to have more. And um, as you all know, five years later, we have the twins. And um, again, God knew it was better for us than we knew, even though we made all these plans and we set out and we discussed things like you're supposed to do. We made our plans. God knew better. And his plans were definitely better for us than our plans were. Um, And now when people ask me if I'm going to have any children, any more children, I say, oh, yes, I want to have 10 more. And then Mike gets really nervous. So I can't even imagine what was so great about my life before my kids. 
and I know that whatever plans that I had would pale in comparison to the joy that I get from my family. And so once again, God was good to me. God has proven time and again his plan for us, our lives, is perfect. As it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, his plans are to help us and not to harm us, no matter what it might seem like at the time. Um, and as we begin the process of applying for training and, and going through, through the motions of this, I am reminded of something that happened to Deuce when he was about almost three years old. He had received as a gift a pair of boots. And he loved these boots. They were his absolute favorite thing in the world. They had Thomas the Train on them, and they were just very cool. And he wore them everywhere. Well, we had a corps officer at the time whose grandson was um, a huge Thomas the Train fan, and he wanted those boots. And um, he couldn't find them anywhere. So one Sunday after church, our officer came to me and said, can I buy those boots from you? And I said, well, they're not mine. And he says, well, how's this, how's this? I have a big wheel bike and I'll give it to him if he'll give me those boots. And I said, they're not my boots. <laughs> you have to talk to Deuce. So here's the core officer going up to a little three-year-old, you know, and trying to negotiate with him. Well, Deuce didn't quite understand what was going on but he saw how excited we were when we were explaining it to him because we knew it was a good deal for him. You know, we knew he would get so much enjoyment out of his bike. And um, so we told him, yeah, he'll trade you a big wheel for your shoes. So Deuce immediately sat down and took his shoes off. And the officer said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I don't have the bike here. I'm not sending your child home without any shoes. Well, Deuce insisted. He wouldn't take the shoes back. He wanted that big wheel. He knew something good was coming. And as we walked him to the car that day, you know, I, I asked him, I said, well, are you okay with everything that just happened? You know, are you going to miss your shoes? And he says, mommy, what's a big wheel? <laughs> he had no idea what was coming, but he knew it was going to be good. And he knew it was going to be exciting because he trusted us and he knew that we weren't going to do him any harm and that our plans for him was good. And um, so like Deuce, as we move forward and we look forward to training and eventually officership, I try not to enter into it with any preconceived notions of what's going to come up. I just try to, um, um, I just want to experience it and I want to enjoy what God has for us with an open mind and trust that as always, he has a perfect plan for us. And once again, God is good.